Hello everyone, I'm Rod Wortham and welcome to this episode of Race Face Driver Updates. We have a lot to cover this week, so let's get started. Anthony Alfredo brought home a sixth place finish in his Bristol Motor Speedway debut in the NASCAR Xfinity Series race over the weekend. He started in 19th position. Let's get a post-race update directly from the driver. Man, I'd be lying if I wasn't tired of uh, finishing sixth. Uh, that was our fifth sixth place finish this year. Uh, got inside of uh, the seven car for fifth. Uh, unfortunately, the guy behind us caught us when we were side by side and gave me a bump and I got too tight underneath him. Uh, couldn't really turn the car and lost the ground I gained on him. But our car was super fast. Everyone at Richard Childress Racing has done a phenomenal job. Brought me a super fast Death Wish Coffee Chevrolet Camaro. And uh, just proud of everyone on this 21 team, especially the pit crew today as well. Uh, we had a really successful day considering we started uh, all the way around 20th and drove all the way up to the front. I just needed track position there at the end. I definitely feel like we had, uh, we were maybe just one adjustment away from being perfect, but I still think we were good enough to probably contend for the win if we had the track position. So I'm really, uh, really proud of that. And like I said, the effort everyone's putting in is paying off, getting better every week. Once again, we're, we're back on a roll and as much as it's frustrating to finish sixth again, um, and, and be so close to another top five. It's a really solid run for us and my first time here at Bristol in the Xfinity Series. And everyone who finished in front of me has run here, uh, ran here in the spring and both races last year. So uh, that's exciting stuff, something to build on for sure. Um, I always want more though, so I would be lying if I said I wasn't a little bit disappointed, and especially with how fast our car was. But very thankful for everyone's support, especially Deathwish Coffee for coming on board here at Bristol Motor Speedway. Finished the race at the world's fastest half mile with little to no damage and uh, had a really fast car. So we'll be back at it at Las Vegas Motor Speedway next weekend. And uh, I'm really looking forward to that. Try to be a few spots better. Thank you all for the support. Another solid finish. My hat goes off to all of these rookie drivers this year competing at this level with no qualifying and no practice is something that has never been done before. Let's now move on to Jesse Love who took to the high banks at Winchester Speedway in the Arkham Menard Series Toyota 200 in Winchester, Indiana. He qualified third and brought home a top five finish in fourth in his Venturini Motorsports debut. Jesse was on Speed 51's bullring with Bob Dillner and they had some fun. Let's listen in on a short segment of that interview where they're talking about the crossover move. Hey, listen, that crossover was gnarly, okay? I'm telling you what, we were like all pumped up. Uh, by the way, Devin Rogers saying Jesse definitely had Winchester out in those last 50, started to catch, you know, the guys and catch his rhythm. But uh, how about that crossover? Was it as cool in the car as it was for us in the Mav TV booth? It was super cool. I, and I realized, like, you was kind of getting the corner pretty fast and, I wasn't very good kind of coming off the top. I wasn't until really late in the race, um, but I was free enough to where, and Billy had the car turning really well, to where I could kind of just park it in the middle and then just drive down the racetrack and maybe catch a little bit of banking and, uh, you know, de-wedge the car a little bit once I got to it to turn even better. And I kind of just anticipated the 23 and what, obviously, he didn't want to let the 25 get away with them being such a cl uh, close points battle. I kind of figured there'd be some, you know, pretty big moves, so... Uh, I just had to commit to it, you know, and he did beat me in the last restart in the bottom. So I know he really wanted to keep that position. So I just had to run it really hard and uh, make sure that I timed it right. And, you know, my timing was maybe a little bit off on it, but it was, you know, I feel it was pretty close and uh, it was pretty cool too. That was gnarly. Up next for Jesse, Arca Menard Series West at the Bull Ring at Las Vegas Motor Speedway this Saturday. Joe Valento brought home a third place finish in the A main at Jefferson Speedway in the Midwest Truck Series. Joe qualified seventh, finished sixth in his heat race, then started third in the feature at a track where passing was at a premium. Let's hear a little bit from Joe Valento. Hey guys, Joe Valento here back from Jefferson Speedway. So the KBR performance guys gave me a great truck yet again. We felt solid after the last round of practice heading into qualifying. Felt like tires just really didn't fire off for qualifying. Qualified seventh. So then for the feature race with the invert, we started third and finished third. Track was tricky to pass on last night, mostly just a one groove track. 
and a lot of lap traffic made it difficult to make any moves on any other trucks. Uh, so good points night overall, solid night of racing, coming home with a top three finish. Can't thank everyone else enough who makes this possible. Nitro Lubricants, Ardent Mills, Napa Auto Parts, the Friends of Jacqueline Foundation, and Race Face Brand Development. Up next for Joe, Midwest Trucks at La Crosse Fairground Speedway on October the 9th. Sam Butler returned to Hickory Motor Speedway for an 80 lap limited late model feature where he sat on the pole and brought home a second place finish. His fifth podium finish in his last six starts. Sam led most of the race, but a late race caution allowed national points leader Josh Berry to get past Sam on the restart and barely edged him out at the finish line. Up next for Sam, championship weekend and twin 40 lap features at Hickory Motor Speedway on Saturday. Bryce Bizanson was at South Sound Speedway with Jefferson Racing in his number seven Friends of Jacklin Super Late Model where he qualified fourth, was running in the top three when he got collected by a lap car puncturing the radiator and ending his night along with several other cars. Up next for Bryce, Wenatchee Valley Super Oval on September the 26th. Caden Honeycutt was at Boyd Raceway Park on Saturday night in his Dirt Modified. Caden had a fast car and was third in his heat, but started fourth due to the invert. He took the lead on lap five, but after the white flag flew, he was passing a lap car when that car cut down on him, knocking the tire off the wheel. Fortunately, his lead was large enough that he still managed a third place finish. Up next for Caden, dirt mods and late models at Boot Hill Speedway in Greenwood, Louisiana on Saturday night. Haley Constance was at Dimming Speedway in her 600 micro sprint, where she qualified seventh, started second in her heat race, finished second. She then started seventh in the feature and raced her way to a fourth place finish. Up next for Haley, Micro Sprints, back at Dimming Speedway on September 25th through the 27th. Gavin Graham was at 417 Southern Speedway in his double-O pro truck, where he qualified seventh, started on the pole with the invert, and led the first 15 laps before an issue occurred in the suspension, making his truck very loose. The young driver was able to stay out of trouble and finished the race in six. Up next for Gavin, this weekend at Chris Motorsports Park where he'll be back in the Kurt Brett Motorsports Pro Truck. Let's now move out to California and Madera Speedway where we find four of our race face drivers. Joey East had a hot rod heading into round seven of the Nut Up Pro Late Model Series at Madera in his number 88, Nate Clower prepared Ford. Joey topped the speed charts in practice number three, but was only able to post a ninth in qualifying in a field that saw the top 10 cars separated by a tenth and a half of a second. Joey started the A main in fifth with the card draw. However, the cards did not fall Joey's way when a radiator hose came loose on a car in front of him, watering down the track in turn one, sending Joey and two other cars hard into the wall, ending his night early. Up next for Joey, Arca Menard Series West this weekend at the Bull Ring at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Jake Bowman was at Madera Speedway for round seven of the 5150 Junior Late Model Series in his number 71, Nate Clower prepared for. Jake was top five throughout the weekend in practice, qualified fourth, and drew the number one starting position for the 70 lap feature. Jake led the first 38 laps before slipping back to second, two laps before the halfway break. On the restart, Jake started on the inside and fell back to third, and from that point on, the car suffered handling issues but he eventually brought home a fourth place finish. Jake was scheduled to run the Nut Up Pro Late Model race as well, 
qualifying fourth for that race, but the car was not able to make the starting grid. Cassidy Hines entered round seven of the 5150 Junior Late Model Series, focused on turning in her best performance of the year. Cassidy topped the time charts in the final practice, qualified fifth, and was passing for fourth when she got sent to the back on a very questionable incident, resulting in a ninth place finish. Up next for Cassidy, Legend Cars at I-25 Speedway in Pueblo, Colorado. Brody Moore returned to Madera Speedway for round seven of the 5150 Junior Late Model Series in his number 78 MGF trucking entry. Brody qualified 11th, ran a very consistent race, and finished in the seventh position. Up next for Brody, back to Mazera for round eight of the Junior Late Model Series on October 3rd. We want to give a special shout out to Sam Mayer, who finished first in the NASCAR Truck Series at Bristol Motor Speedway, and then turned around and parked his ARCA car in victory lane the same night for another victory. Congratulations, Sam. That's it for this week's Race Face Driver Updates. And remember, if you've missed any of our shows, you can get caught up at raceface.tv on demand. Don't forget to follow us on social media. Make sure to check out Speed Zone Race Store for the latest apparel from your favorite Race Face Driver. As always, we encourage you to support local racing in your communities. We'll be back next week with more from your favorite race face drivers. So go out there, have a great race week. I'm Rod Wortham. Thanks for watching.